So I'm going to introduce you to two dogs in a trench coat. Go to school. The author is Julie Volatko, maybe, and illustrated by Colin Jack. So I'm going to read you the back real quick. It says, Sassy and Waldo are good dogs. Sassy and Waldo spend their day keeping, keeping the good life. And they have a squirrel that has, uh, is there a squirrel that has ever gotten inside? No. But every day, their boy Stuart leaves for school. Sassy and Waldo need to save Stuart, but they don't let dogs in school, not even really good ones. So Sassy and Waldo put on a trench coat, and not everyone at Bo Arthur Elementary thinks that they are a new student. I'm sorry, now everyone, not everyone, but now everyone thinks they're a new student. Everyone except Stuart. So we're going to jump into chapter one and chapter two. There's at least four books in this series. So if you ever want to, and it's kind of fun because there is more illustrations in this than like a normal chapter book. So it's kind of, it's kind of fun. So chapter one, Waldo was pacing the perimeter. He was a small, scruffy dog who smelled like kibble, plus something he'd rather not discuss. Waldo walked from room to room, checking all the doors and windows. What was he checking for? Stray meatballs. Uh, maybe squirrels. Squirrels were a real threat, and that required constant vigilance. He also had to check for his humans. Every day they escaped, despite Waldo's best efforts. He begged. He pleaded. He made his eyes extra sad, and still, every day they escaped. Somehow, even though the humans got out every day, Waldo was the best at his job. Had a squirrel ever gotten into the house, for instance? No, never. And while he had yet to find a stray meatball, he was very good at finding odd bits of cheese around the refrigerator, and he cleaned them all up as a good dog should. He was a professional. So there you can kind of see some of the illustrations. Sassy was a lot bigger than Waldo. She had helped him pace the perimeter earlier, but then got to the part of the front hall with the wood floors and her back feet kept slipping and then she was lying down and then she was napping. Every afternoon, a square of sun came in the window and made a warm spot on the floor. It was very important for Sassy to nap in the sun, in the sun square every day. It was her job. She also kept the squirrels out of the house. Had there ever been a squirrel in the house? No, not a one. Sassy was the best at what she did. Not only did she keep all the squirrels away, but she also let the humans rub her belly, which they loved to do. So there you can see her snapping in the sunlight. My dog likes to do that too. Sassy had reached the good part of her nap where the sun was so hot that it was like a blanket of fire Plus, she was so relaxed, she couldn't move. So the only thing ruining this stellar nap was Waldo. He kept walking by her head and clearing his throat, which sounded like a bullfrog doing a dog impersonation. How can you sleep when there are so many squirrels and imminent intruders, asked Waldo. And Sassy just lifted her head and sneezed. The sun made her sneeze, and whenever she sneezed, she sneezed 15 times in a row. There. Are, in, are there are intruders, intimate intruders? Uh, that means there might maybe be some in the next year. Well, that's not really what that means, said Sassy. Also, our humans might be back any second. You know they won't be home for another 20, 22 minutes. I'm going back to sleep. There's something else we need to talk about, said Waldo. Oh, are you sure? because I need a nap. Something absolutely must be done about this school situation. Oh, fine, said Sassy, sitting up. Let's do something about it. But what? It had been going on for a while. Every day, Waldo and Sassy's boy, Stuart, trudged off to this awful place called school. Waldo and Sassy knew it was awful because every night, Stuart's, Stuart's parents... So there's a picture of him talking. Would ask him 
what he did at school, and he said nothing. Plus, he smelled like a, mirrored a weird mix of boredom and anxiety. This school place was clearly the worst. Hey, I've got a plan, said Waldo. Oh, really, said Sassy. Well, what do you think it's a good plan? You haven't even told me what it is yet. Oh, you're always so negative, Sassy, said Waldo. I'm not being negative. You just haven't told me what your plan is. And Waldo patted around the room. He checked the doorways and looked under the table. He made sure there wasn't a spy near the refrigerator and got distracted by a muffin crumb. Sassy yipped to get his attention. Hey, hey, Mr. Investigator, what's your plan? Oh, right, said Waldo. Like I said, we need a plan to deal with the school problem. So, are you ready? Yes, said Sassy. Um, maybe you should sit down. It's a real good plan. Oh, fine, and Sassy sat down. Um, maybe you should lie down. It's a really good plan. Um, maybe we should do both. Lie down for a bit. Oh, just tell me what your plan is already. The plan is, well... First, we get an airplane. Oh, Biscuits, are you kidding me? Said Sassy. Where are we going to get an airplane? Oh, I don't know. The airplane store? Or maybe order it from that internet thing? No. Shh, said Sassy. Someone's coming. What do you mean? Shh, let's bark. So there they are in their plane. thinking about what this might look like. The dogs commenced the standard bark and waggy greet procedure to remind the humans that the Waldo and Sassy household protection and face licking service was as relevant as ever. Stewart sat on the floor to pet his dogs. He was a rumpled kid who didn't mind some dog slobber on his cheeks or muddy paw prints on his jeans. You're the best dogs in the world, said Stewart. You're better than all the humans. He's just stating the facts, said Waldo. Kid's speaking the truth, said Sassy, licking Stuart's chin. If he likes us that much, why doesn't he give us hot dogs all the time, asked Waldo. Well, that's a good question, said Sassy. And just then, Stuart's dad walked in and the dogs wag waggy greeted him. Although he was more reserved than Stuart, and they'd learned they weren't allowed to jump on his pants or to lick his elbows. Hey, kiddo, said his father. How was school? And Stuart just sighed. Oh, boring. And Sassy met Waldo's eyes. Yup, this school problem was just as bad as ever. Well, great, said Stuart's father. Good for you. You know what I always loved about school? Lunch. Oh, boy. Lunch was great. When, when was the last time I had a bologna sandwich? Oh, uh, why don't we eat those anymore? Yes, said Sassy. I have no idea what a bologna sandwich is. But my inner dog sense is telling me that it would be fantastic. I didn't have a bologna sandwich, said Stuart. I ate the lunch that you packed for me this morning. Oh, right. This is worse than I thought, Waldo told, told Sassy. Oh, uh, Why? I saw that sandwich the father made. It had sprouts and low-fat soy cheese. And the side dish was tiny carrots. Like, tiny carrots, said Sassy? Oh, better than bacon? No, of course not. You know what would be good, said Sassy. Bacon wrapped around some of those tiny carrots, said Waldo. Oh, but never mind that. What I'm saying is Stuart must be seriously glum to have eaten that lunch. Oh, our poor Stuart. And Waldo, Waldo closed his eyes for a moment in deep concentration. I think, he said, what we have to make sure is that Stuart never leaves the house again. So there's the picture from the last page of chapter one. And we're going to stop there. Usually I do the first two chapters, but I think this one's long enough for now. And we'll pick up in a little bit.